Hi everyone, Donovan here. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, variables and the types of variables that we have in GDevelop and in game development in general. So you may remember from basic um, algebra that sometimes we use letters to hold a value, right? Um, these letters, these letters are just called variables. So they pretty much just stand in for a different value, right? So this X, because two plus X is four, we know that X is two. So X is just standing in for the number two. So we have the same sort of thing in computer science where we'll assign values to random, usually not letters, usually we'll use words, but words that will act as variables. So placeholders for those values. So some things, that will hold values are things like your score, right? So you will we'll create a variable for score and it'll hold the value for your score over the course of the game. Uh, another thing might be your health or strength or da damage or number of bullets or number of lives, that sort of thing. Those are all variables. Now, there's three different type of variables that GDevelop has and most game engines will have similar types of variables to these three. The first is called a object variable. So if I click on any of these objects, you can see, uh, sorry, another word for object variables are instance variables, right? So if I, if I click on this object, you see an option there called a instance variable. I can open that and I can give a instance variable. Actually, I'll do it, I'll do it to the coin because that'll make more sense. I'll create an instance variable for the coin called coin value. Now, when you, when you, whenever you give names in coding and you want to give a name with two or more words, right? You always want to capitalize the first letter of the second word, just like that. Um, because variable names, that sort of thing, they can only usually be one word, but sometimes you want more words. So that's just how you get around that. So that's called camel case, where the first word is all lowercase, and then every word after that starts with a capital letter. Um, or you might see sometimes that even the first word is also capitalized. Okay. So coin value, and I want to say maybe every time I collect a coin, um, the value is 10, right, by default. So I click that. Um, now notice that although I've created that for this coin, if I click on this coin, there's no instance variable there, right? So by doing that, I can assign different values for the same variable attached to that object. So this coin, I can make it 10 and then this coin, I can give it a value of 20 maybe, um, if I wanted to, and then maybe just make it bigger or whatever. If I wanted to give all objects a default value, so for example, if I wanted all coins to start with the value 10, and then I want to go change it later, I can click on those three dots here, edit object variables, right? And same thing, I'll type in coin value, and I'll put in 10, and I'll hit apply. So if I click out of it and then click back in, so now you can see coin value is 10. So both of them has coin value 10. And if I drag in another coin and click it, that also has 10, right? And then if I wanted to change one of them, say I wanted this one to be five, I'll just come in here and change it. And it doesn't affect all these other coins. they will stay at 10. So that's what an object variable is. And the object variable will disappear when that item gets disappeared. So whenever I come and collect this coin and it gets destroyed, it'll go away. Now, the next type of variable is called a scene variable. And to create a scene variable, up here in your top left hand corner, you have something called the project manager, which is where we created the original scenes. So if I click on the three dots there next to my scene, which is level one, I can edit scene variables and I can create a new scene variable. Now, a scene variable is a variable that exists 
only inside that scene. So if I created a scene variable in level one, um, I don't know, maybe I want to create a checkpoint inside level one, right? And I, I create it somewhere. Whenever I finish level one and go to level two, that scene value disappears from, um, from the game pretty much. So it won't remember it in level two. Okay, so that's a scene value. And then all these values after you've created them, um, you'll be able to code them. Now a global var variable, so you, you'll have to cl click on the project manager again. And then in game settings, you have an option there for global variables. And I click plus. And I actually want to create a global variable here called score. And score will be zero. Oh, well, it's, it will start at zero. And what a global variable is, is a, um, a variable that will survive the entirety of the game. So even if my main character dies and my levels, um, um, like I go to the next level, it will still keep the score in its memory, right? So it, it stays the entirety of the game. So I'll get out of that. And um, if I wanted to code any of it now, like say I'm doing something there, I just have to add action and then there's a variables option here. And then I can change either the global variable or scene variable or I can use an object variable um, if I wanted to. Okay, so that's how you create and access the three different types of variables you have in GDevelop. In the next video, we'll create a scoring system.